Poultry Insight is a series of videos about topics related to the poultry industry. This video is about Concentrated Animal Feeding Operations, or CAFOs for short. What is an AFO and what is a CAFO? AFO is short for Animal Feeding Operation and CAFO is short for Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation. It's important to understand the definition of an AFO first because you can't be a CAFO unless you're first defined as an AFO. An AFO is a facility that has animals that will be confined and fed for a total of 45 days or more over any 12 month period and no crops, vegetation, or grass are sustained in the normal growing season over any portion of the facility where the animals are confined. For a facility to be a CAFO, it first must be defined as an AFO. After that, the facility must exceed a threshold for the total number of animals confined. The thresholds set by federal regulations for chickens is 125,000, turkeys 55,000, and laying hens 82,000. However, some states have lowered these threshold numbers. An AFO can also be designated a CAFO by the regulatory agency if the facility discharges a pollutant into the waters of the United States. Who owns CAFOs? The majority of CAFOs are owned and operated by family farmers. Contrary to popular belief, farms in America are not owned and operated by large corporations. The truth is the family farm makes up 98% of all American farms in operation. Driven by economic pressures, farms today may carry out multiple operations. Animal producers now raise multiple species, such as poultry and cattle, while also cultivating row crops and forage. What are potential CAFO impacts on the environment? The main byproduct generated on poultry and egg farms is poultry litter. Litter is a combination of poultry manure and bedding. Poultry litter contains organic material as well as nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, nutrients that are essential to the production of crops such as corn, wheat, and hay. Poultry farmers carefully manage and match their crop needs with the nutrients available. If nutrients are applied at levels beyond the nutrient requirements of the crop, they can build up. Beyond a certain point, the soil structure can no longer bind nutrients and they can move to surface water. Plant life within the water body utilizes the nutrient just as plants on land do. If the plant life in the water is excessive, it can deplete the dissolved oxygen in the water and reduce the water's ability to support fish and other aquatic life. Excessive plant life in the water can also prevent the body of water from being used for recreational purposes. These risks are the reason why poultry farmers so carefully manage their litter and manure through nutrient management plans. These plans are designed to use poultry litter to effectively provide needed crop nutrients while protecting against potential adverse impacts on water quality. How do producers manage their operations to avoid adverse environmental impacts? To ensure the valuable nutrients contained in poultry litter are used in a responsible manner, the majority of CAFO owners develop a written plan that specifies how manure will be managed. A nutrient management plan details the numerous aspects related to the use of manure as an organic fertilizer. Among other things, the nutrient management plan identifies the nutrient content of the producer's manure, residual nutrient content of the soil on the farm, manure application rates tailored to the nutrient need of the crop, and the location of surface waters or other areas where manure will not be spread. Producers also implement a series of land management practices to protect and enhance the environment. These tools are called conservation practices and best management practices. These practices have been developed and designed by agricultural professionals to remove or lessen potential environmental impact from agricultural operations. Common practices found on poultry and egg production facilities include manure storage structures, 
and mortality management structures. These facilities are designed and constructed to store and protect these byproducts until they can be applied to crop and pasture land according to the farm's nutrient management plan. The number of practices that have been developed are numerous. A CAFO owner's decision to install and maintain a particular practice is often dictated by the type of the facility he operates, its location, potential environmental risks, and economic feasibility. Other practices a CAFO owner may utilize includes the restoration of stream buffers, installation of livestock exclusion fencing along streams, and stormwater control structures. What are the benefits of CAFOs? For the poultry industry, CAFOs are a result of the industry's evolution. Until the early 1900s, the industry was no more than backyard flocks kept by housewives for the production of eggs. Eggs were consumed on the farm and sometimes sold by the housewife for grocery money or extra spending money. On special occasions, families that raised their own flocks would eat chicken for dinner, often on Sunday. Due to its high cost, individuals not living on farms rarely ate chicken. While the details of the story are not fully clear, the credit for the birth of today's poultry industry is given to Mrs. Wilmer Steele of Sussex County, Delaware. In 1923, Mrs. Steele purchased 500 chicks and raised them to be sold for meat. Her business became profitable, and by 1926, she built a poultry house large enough to house and raise 10,000 chickens. In time, the industry's model moved to a fully integrated model where the poultry companies provide chickens and feed to CAFO owners and pay for them to care for and raise the chickens. The existence of CAFOs, which are used to support the modern day poultry industry, has allowed the industry to drastically increase its efficiency. Research has provided scientific data and the development of technologies that has reduced poultry and egg production costs. In the past, it took over five pounds of feed per chicken to produce one pound of weight gain. Coupled with the research, the use of CAFOs that now provide animals with optimal living conditions, it takes only two pounds of feed to produce a pound of weight gain. This has made poultry the least expensive and most sustainable source of meat protein in the world and expanded the availability of eggs, another inexpensive source of protein, to more individuals around the world. Income produced by CAFOs provides local communities with much needed tax dollars to support schools and other infrastructure. In 2012, the poultry industry in the U.S. had an economic impact of almost $274 billion and paid $23.5 billion in state and federal taxes. Who regulates CAFOs? The major federal law that regulates CAFOs is the Clean Water Act. The Clean Water Act is a program to regulate discharges of pollutants into waters of the United States and regulate quality standards for surface waters. The Clean Water Act requires states to develop water quality standards for water within their state and made it unlawful to discharge any pollutant from a point source into navigable waters unless a permit is obtained. The permitting program which gives a point source the authority to discharge pollutants is called the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Program. While the Environmental Protection Agency controls this program, the agency has authorized 40 states to administer state permitting programs after the EPA has verified that the state permitting program is consistent with the federal permitting requirements. Although many states have been given the authority to regulate CAFOs, regional offices for the Environmental Protection Agency often intervene. Enforcement representatives from regional EPA offices often initiate CAFO inspections to ensure farms are complying with the Clean Water Act. For CAFOs, the main pollutants of concern are nitrogen and phosphorus. As we discussed earlier, too much nitrogen and phosphorus can create excessive plant life in water and deplete the water's ability to support aquatic life. Because CAFOs are included in the definition of a point source, 
They are required to obtain an NPDES permit if they discharge pollutants into a waters of the United States. While an NPDES permit may provide a point source, the authority to discharge, it may also include discharge limits based on water quality criteria or standards that were designed to protect designated uses of surface waters, such as supporting aquatic life or recreation. This message was brought to you by the U.S. Poultry and Egg Association. Funding for this series of videos was provided by the International Poultry Expo. Please support our exhibitors.